Hello, nerds. Welcome to Out of the Box Games. I'm Brian. Today we're going to talk about Commander Masters. So, Commander Masters. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this set, personally. Um, I was going to wait on, you know, just hold off on looking at any spoilers and just kind of be surprised. But, uh, I mean, because we kind of know more or less what it's probably going to have, being that, you know, it just, it's all reprints. Um, and you just kind of look at in the past of what they've released, you kind of get a good good idea of, of what to expect. But I, I checked it out anyway. I wanted to see if there's going to be any curveballs or anything like that, any, any big surprises. doesn't look like there's really any big surprises. There's textured cards, so there's that. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, and uh, there's the, I don't know if you call it showcase style, but the art style that's like the, the portraits. Um, which seems to be very polarized. Some people really dig them, some people don't. Personally, I think it's hit or miss. Like some of them look great, like Micaeus looks amazing. Um, others look kind of, eh, not so hot. But um, the colors are definitely unique. I think that's pretty cool. At any rate, so I was checking out some, some content and I was really surprised to see so much negativity around this product. Um, I feel like a lot of it's kind of, you know, wallet fatigue, product fatigue, so much of this stuff is getting, you know, so much churn and burn is just coming out, something new, something new, something new. And, um, you know, especially coming off the coattails of Lord of the Rings, um, you're looking at, what was that, $450 collector boxes, maybe even more. I don't know, I wasn't buying them. <laughs> um, I'm not paying that much for $200 worth of cards in the, uh, the uh, what, the, the chance that I might get a, the single Pringle, come on. Uh, but yeah, so everyone's, you know, been pumping so much money into this product and then you got secret layers, of course, and obviously those aren't cheap. They're really difficult to keep up with as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's people maybe just really, especially, and then you look at the economy, the economy is not hot, you know, I mean, um, you know, wages are stagnant, um, you know, job growth is stagnant. Basically prices go up, gas is going up, food's going up, everything's going up. But, uh, but incomes are remaining mostly flat. So it's, it's a tough time <laughs> for fans of this game to keep up with it. And I can totally get why people would have a lot of um, negative feelings toward this right now. And then there's all the other things going on with, with the company and with Hasbro sending out, you know, the, the Nazi bootlickers to, you know, I mean, it's just, it's really, really effed up, man. Um, I'm not into, uh, you can hate the company and I pretty much do. I mean, these people cancel artists and then try to virtue signal for it. They, they alter classic works of art so that they can virtue signal again. You know, let's put a black character in place of a white one. No real reason why, but I don't know. Why the hell not? Because we're gonna hide behind virtue and say, but we're doing a good thing. Look, we're not racist, I swear. We got the black guy in, in place of the white guy. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's just like super lazy, man. It's like, you got enough, you got plenty of diversity. You're good, you know? Anyway, but yeah, people are just kind of burned out, man. And I think it's easy to find flaw in, in product that even if you love it, you know, you're, you're gonna find stuff that you don't like about it when it's so expensive. And that's what we're gonna look at first, real quick. Let's just get that out of the way. So what's the brass tacks here? Man, draft box is 295, last I looked anyway. Mind you, that's 24 packs. Seems like anytime they have like a really hot draft box, potentially, um, it's always 24 packs, even though the price is higher. You're getting less, but you're paying more. That right there is just kind of like a kick in the ass, right? They did it for double feature boxes. Um, you know, so that's kind of a bummer. And then you got the set box at 380. Yeah, 380. So drafts are obviously gonna have a ton of bulk. You know, you're gonna get like a bunch of soul rings and commander, uh, command towers, all that stuff basically, all the staples. And it's cool, but it's like, there's absolutely no reason to do that because you can just hit them up as singles and they'll be under a buck probably. You know, unless it's the borderless versions, which by the way, they do look really cool. And that's one thing, it's, it's all subjective. Personally, I think that the artwork on this one is a home run. I, I love the artwork on this thing. The only thing, like I said, is the portrait styles. It's kind of like, eh, some of them are hot, some are not. But uh, the borderless, man, like even the Arcane Signet, we finally have like a great looking Arcane Signet. 
So that stupid like cartoonish hand with the big blue thing there. Um, it's real creepy, looks very cool. Um, yeah, so everything looks really good. Uh, the Demonic Tutor is incredible. The Borderless version, like I said, the Micaeus portrait, um, all kinds of good looking stuff. A lot of people are saying that it's a lot of filler though, like a lot of lower tier mid-range cards and you know, the, the cards have been downgraded from Mythic to, to Rare. Um, there were a couple that were boosted up from Rare to Mythic, Demonic Tutor being one of them. I can't remember what any of the others are offhand, but at any rate, so there's a little chaos going on here, but the main issue is that the prices are just jacked up. Granted, it's pre-release, so yeah, that's the case. If you are patient enough, you know, after a few weeks, it's going to tank, you know, and then if you're even more patient than that down the road, once this thing all levels out and it's all forgotten and there's no buzz about it, you'll be able to score a ton of these cards for very cheap, you know, for probably, what, $250 to $300, you'll be able to grab pretty much anything that you really want out of this for the most part, as long as it's not super, super fancy. Anyway, that leaves you with the collector boxes, which are only $215. I say only because, you know, is this gonna drop under 200? Of course not. If anything, it's gonna get a little touch higher, which it probably will. I, um, that's the flashiest, splashiest junk in this whole set, right? So that's the one that I'm going for. I'm grabbing myself a collector box just for fun. You know, I mean, it's tempting to get a case at this price to be honest, because I actually really like a lot of the cards and I still need some of them. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. I, one box is gonna, you know, I'm gonna dip my toes in the water here and see how that goes, but. It's only four packs, if you don't know. Um, the Master Set's only four packs, so very expensive. But at $215, that's like not bad. Like I said, you're not. it's not gonna fall under $200, it's just not. Um, and those are gonna have the cards that are most valuable and that are most likely to retain their value. So, you know, it comes down to purchase price, pull rates, and market longevity for something like this, right? For a product like this, especially. The purchase price, it kind of is what it is. Like I said, that's the strategy is either, either just wait it out a little bit, get the sealed product for cheaper, or just wait it out a whole lot and get the singles for, you know, bottom bottom price, basically. The bottom rate. And uh, pull rates, that's the big question is, who the hell knows how these pull rates are gonna be? I've opened a lot of TCG product and I feel like I feel like Wizards of the Coast actually tends to have among the better pull rates. You know, I feel like if I, I usually break even, if not do better, you know, with these products. Um, yeah, sometimes it's hit or miss, but it's not like Pokemon, like Christ, we opened up, uh, what was it, Chilling Rain. We got, the, got it on sale, luckily, it was like $95. We pulled like $28 worth of cards out of that thing, which is unacceptable to me. Like, I, I was like, we can't buy any more Pokemon for a while, like, that's not right. Um, best card was like $8 card, the rest was garbage. And that's really common with Pokemon, actually. I don't know if I just have crap luck with it, but I swear everything we open for Pokemon is garbage in terms of value anyway. But anyway, Wizard of the Coast is really good about this, so I feel pretty confident with the pull rate for the Commander Masters, but we'll see. Um, and then, of course, also we should mention the Precon decks, which are probably the best damn thing to come out of this set, to be honest. Um, they're all gonna be pretty fantastic, it looks like. I haven't actually seen any of the actual card lists, so I can't really say that officially yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't. You got a Slivers deck, you got Eldrazi deck, you got Planeswalkers and Enchantments. So, can't really go wrong with that. Like, how could you possibly screw that up? Um, and you do have some actual new cards in each of those uh, pre-cons, which is pretty cool. And mind you, when you get those uh, those pre-cons, you also have a sample collector booster pack, which is, is just a couple cards, but that's kind of cool, right? Anyway, super excited about those. I will open those on the channel. I'll make a separate video for each one. We're gonna go through literally every card. Um, and um, yeah, and so you can look forward to that. But pre-cons aside, because that's really kind of like a separate thing altogether, that's kind of the status of the rest of the sealed product for the most part. Um, I think it's worth mentioning, you know, I noted some of my favorite hits out of this thing that I would love to see. I don't have any of the medallions that are in it. Um, that includes foil etched versions, which personally I love foil etched cards, so um, that's a win. I really hope that I hit. I mean, I'm opening one collector box, maybe I'll hit one. Um, the rest I'll have to buy singles. But uh, you got Jewel Lotus, that was one of the first leaks. The Ur Dragon, Heart of the Wilds. Um, 
Hammer of Nizan, you got Steel Shaper's Gift, Pure Steel Paladin, so you got like really good, um, some really cool equipment cards and some really good. I can't remember the name of the one, but it's like Helm, some kind of Helm card or something. The Borderless art looks so cool for that. It's like a skeleton. Uh, Spell Seeker, Demonic Tutor, Smothering Tithe is in this again. Uh, I have to admit the actually the last, the previous artwork, the previous release for that card actually looks better with the creepy hand coming up. This one's kind of a little more lame, but you got Lord of Wu, uh, which makes your creatures unblockable pretty much. Um, Crater Hoof Behemoth, uh, Doubling Season, that's pretty killer. Archfiend of Despair, Land Tax, that's a great hit. Personal Tutor, Grave Pact, and you got a friggin' Foil Etched Great Henge, which thank God has the original artwork, which is so much better than that stupid ass uh, Christmas tree or whatever the hell that thing was from uh, Lord of the Rings. Anyway, that's just some of the ones that just stood out to me, man. There's a bunch of good stuff in this, and I don't even know if the full list has been published yet. I'm not sure, but... Um, uh, and then I noticed some mid-range stuff. You got Frostfang, you got Suncrown, you got Abolisher, which just came out of Secret Lair, but whatever. Um, and Wandering Knight. You know, those are, those are some that I was like, damn, those are good. Those are pretty damn good mid-range cards. And there's a bunch of others. And yes, under that, there are definitely some like more bold cards that are a little more niche. And, um, and of course the staples that are like gonna be dirt cheap which is good, you know, and that's what you need. I think that's the thing to kind of keep in mind. Forget the price of the product a minute as a sealed product. And just remember that you have to kind of run the gamut of, you know, from low end to high end, you know, you, you don't, I, I personally, I don't think it's ever really a good practice to have one or the other. Cause if the, if the product is only on the very high end, you're just gonna end up paying a crap ton of money for it. And we saw what happened when they charged a thousand bucks for the commemorative, you know, uno uh, not unofficial, actually it's official, but not legal cards, uh, basically, basically proxies. And that went over real well. So you can't really go too high and you can't really, you don't want to go too low because you don't want to obviously just serve up garbage. So I do think Wizards of the Coast does pretty good in my opinion. I know I get flack for this probably, but I think they do pretty good at actually uh, putting a good balance of product into each sealed product. It's just that the price sucks. That's really what it comes down to. The purchase point sucks, <laughs> like all the time. And um, the tits going dry, you know, as they say, it's like we only have so much money to pump into this damn thing. It is just a game at the end of the day. You know, for some people, I guess it's purely an investment, but if you're investing solely in cardboard, then I mean, there's something wrong with you, I think maybe, or I shouldn't say that. Teach the own, man. If this is your passion, then hey, if this is what you understand as far as an investment, you don't get crypto or stocks, or you don't feel safe with that, so be it. Uh, but just not probably the wisest thing to do. But um, at the end of the day, for me, it's a game and it's fun. I really love it. It's a lot of fun. And that's why I'm psyched about Commander Masters. In spite of all the negativity and in spite of the jacked up, effed up prices, um, it's just a matter of, uh, at this at this point, um, perseverance. How long can you hold out? Because man, there's actually really good stuff coming up. There's going to be an Assassin's Creed uh, crossover. There's going to be, um, what's the other one? It's another game. Assassin's Creed. Final Fantasy, there we go. Final Fantasy crossover. These are gonna be huge ass money makers. All right, now these are a little bit, these are next year, but just saying, man, those are gonna be massive sets. Like, I think those are gonna blow Lord of the Rings out of the water. So just wait on that. If the question is, does anyone have any money left by that point <laughs> to put into this product? Anyway, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to hit today. So if you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you nerds in the next.